of understanding of many people when it comes to vanity upon vanity. They use this word to build an empire of laziness around themselves. They don't want to do anything because they believe that everything is vanity. So why should I struggle? Why should I work hard? Why should I labor? When everything is vanity upon vanity. And because of this world and the lack of knowledge that many would lack regarding this, many have built an empire of condemnation by the reason of this same world. Vanities upon vanities. That when they see someone refuse to help them, they talk to the person. You don't want to help me. Whatever you have is vanities upon vanity. The view said that the view an empire of condemnation. The what does this world really mean? What was the writer trying to say with this world? So people are poor and they use the word vanity upon vanity to encourage themselves and encourage their poor mentality to cast doubt upon those who are doing well for themselves. Then I said again, what does this scripture really mean about this? And let us read. Are you with me? Okay, that's the chapter 1 from verse 2. It says, we now want to see the mind of the writer. It said, vanity upon vanities. Fear the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. What profit has a man of all his labor which he taken under the sun. The real meaning of vanity upon vanity. One generation passes away and another generation comes. But the earth abandoned forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastened back to his place where he arose. What is the mind of the writer? Was the writer trying to encourage laziness? Was the writer trying to encourage condemnation? Was the writer trying to encourage laziness? Was the writer trying to encourage condemnation? Was the writer trying to, uh, to, to establish or to encourage that we should go about and sleep and be expected manners to fall from heaven because whatever we are going to acquire is all vanity upon vanity. But when you look at the mind of the writer, you will see that the writer is trying to establish that whatever you want to acquire in life, your spiritual growth is more important than your pursuit in life. Are you with me? Your spiritual growth is more important than whatever you want to achieve in life. That's why in third John, I think third John chapter 1, if you read from verse 2, it says, I wish above all things that you prosper even as thy soul prosper it. So in other words, when it says everything is vanity upon vanity, it means that if I'm in a position to kill a man and take his position, whatever I get, when I die, no one will bury me with what I have killed for. And then my soul will perish. Hallelujah. So if I want to acquire a position, instead of thinking that once I can sleep with the manager, I will get that position, then you realize that if I use by sleeping with the manager to acquire that position, I will die. Someone else will take the position. What happened to my soul? So when you have anything you want to achieve in life, don't kill for it. Don't destroy for it. Don't bring others down for you to rise. Don't love, do not lie against your neighbor. Do not 
deceived. Because whatever you are going to acquire, when you die, they are not going to bury you with it. So when they say everything is vanity, because it would, it would not be vanity if it is possible to bury someone with their house. So with me, whatever they are fighting for, when they die, they are still going to continue to live with whatever they have acquired. But for the fact that when they die, nobody is going to bury it with them. When the access bank CEO, when he died, someone has already taken his position. They did not bury him with whatever he had. In fact, they flew him down from America and wrapped him up in a cattle. They wrapped him up in a cattle. They did not place money all over his body with a common cattle. The same cattle they use in wrapping the new television you buy. They use it to wrap a millionaire. So everything he had was not buried with him. So when you are acquiring wealth, the way in which you acquire it matters a lot. Because when you have everything and your soul is not prospering, there is a problem. There are many people who want to acquire everything, all the money, everything they want. They never think about their soul. Until a time will come where they will realize that they are not going, no one is going to bury them with whatever they have. There are many people, many years ago, they, they traveled out and they did a lot of prostitution and they built houses in the 80s, 90s. Believe me when I tell you this, all those houses they built through prostitution or drug, however they, they built all those things. Believe me when I tell you this, it is only the land that have value, the house. No, the anybody that will buy that house from there will break it and rebuild because that house is already out of date. You see, it said everything is vanity. So when you are prospering and your soul is not prospering, there is a problem. The devil does not fight your spiritual life because the devil is stupid. The devil will not engage you for you to be so busy and ignore the things of God. The devil is not stupid because the devil knows that there is life after death. So he is waiting for you on the other side. Because of this lack of knowledge, that is why you see many people will say, oh, you see, it, is, it says the pastor, they are driving nice car. They are even using to condemn men of God Oh, he's a pastor. He's driving a nice car. He's dressing good. He's living a loving life. Look at that man. He's not preaching. Every, he's the same pastor who will preach. Everything is vanity upon vanity. Look at the pastor because they thought that that is what the scripture means. The scripture is not talking about what you have. The writer is trying to tell you that whatever you have, you are going to die and leave them behind. So it doesn't matter what you have. They're not going to bury you with it. In your pursuit for life, never neglect your spiritual growth. Amen. Your spiritual growth is more important than the money you want. Your spiritual growth is more important than the house that you want. God did not say you should not acquire a house. He said his will for you is for you to prosper. But as you are prospering, <laughs> your soul must prosper. Work on your spiritual life. Make your spiritual life your priority. Because there are many people who will not understand now what we are talking about. But believe me when I tell you this. If you know how many mothers who have pursued wealth in their youth, now they are crying. Because they neglected the spiritual growth. And when they look back to the children they've raised, they are shocked 
for what they are saying. They are shocked for what they are saying. A woman, the son, we, the woman we cook and tell his son, give me food from the kitchen. The food that she cooked, the son will put weed on the food. The mother will finish eating and sleep off. The son will sleep with the mother. Imagine if that son was raised to grow spiritually. Spiritual growth will help his mindset and help his thinking faculty and give him a heart of flesh, not a heart of stone. But when the child is not raised spiritually and that child grew up with a heart of stone, one day you'll be shocked with that child. You will speak, the child will give you slap and say, shut up. And if you talk, you will go to prison. Spiritual growth is very important. And if you are not growing spiritually, there is no way your children can grow spiritually. Because many of you think that you, you grow spiritually because you are praying. I'm growing spiritually because I can pray and pray. Your spiritual growth you think is by prayer. A we daughter also pray. Praying has nothing to do with your spiritual growth. Your spiritual growth has to do with your relationship with your father. It's not prayer. Anybody can pray. Anybody can pray. But it has nothing to do with prayer. Because what is prayer? Prayer is a request. We all have a want. For the father, we have a want. And what we want, what we desire, we cannot give it to ourselves. We know that we have a father in heaven who can give it to us. So we will always pray. But when it comes to relationship with the father, it has nothing to do with your want. That is why you must learn to know God personally. You must have a personal relationship with your father. So that you will not be confused. So that you will not be wondering what is going on with my life. Make sure you have a relationship with God. So everything is vanity upon vanity. Is the reason why many fall their hands. Hey, they say everything. Why are they preaching money? They say everything is vanity. Why are they preaching money? Believe me, any pastor that feed on tax and offering is a poor pastor. We don't feed on tithe and offering. God wants you to work hard. He said, I will bless the works of your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. So when God said, I will bless the works of your hand, mean that he wants you to be doing something. And whatever you are doing, he will then bless it. So for what he's saying, that your spiritual growth is very important. Don't go into that idea that everything is vanity upon vanity and put your hand. You will die in hunger. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything is vanity upon vanity. But God wants you to do something. God wants you to work hard. But while you are prospering, God wants your soul to also prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is not stupid. When he said, what shall it profit a man if he gets the whole world and lose his soul? It means very concerned about your soul. Hallelujah. So my encouragement to each and every one of you, if your soul, if you are not growing spiritually, you can't serve 